Good morning. Good morning, Royal Oak beloved worshiping community. And good morning, beloved Oak, Royal Oak beloved worshiping community who are watching us online. I'm Pastor Tim, privileged to be pastor here. It is a blessing to be in this worshiping and praying community. I wanna get right in today. We have a lot to do this morning. The scripture that I'm reading is about mana and it's about God giving mana to the Jews in the desert. I found a poem by a Methodist minister, Steve Garnish Holmes. I just wanna read you this poem. It's going to set up my sermon later. He asks a really interesting question. What is your mana? What gets you through your desert? You see, this whole mana thing is not just a 2,000 years old thing. What gets you through your desert? What gets you through disappointments in your life? What gets you through a health crisis or through your own fragility and mortality? Some might call it courage or persistence, but you know, as followers of Jesus, you know it is not you. It is given to you. It is given for you, and you only need receive it. What is your mana? It is a gift from the holy God. It is God's mana that we are blessed to receive every morning, every morning, every morning. Our first reading this morning is by Tanya after we have our prayer for illumination. Creator of unity, body of peace, spirit of community and healing, bind us together around your word and send us out to do your justice, show your mercy and embody your redeeming love, glorifying you Holy Trinity, amen. Our first reading comes from John 6, 27 to 35. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, what must we do to do the works God requires? Jesus answered, the work of God is this, to believe in the one who has sent. So they asked him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. <coughs> Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Our second reading this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 16, verses 2 through 7, and then verses 11 through 18, the New International Version. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, if we had only died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you, you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. But then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see if they will follow my instructions. And on the sixth day, they are to prepare what they bring in, and that is to be twice as much as what they gather on the other days. And so Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, 
In the morning, you will know that it was the Lord who brought you out of Egypt. And in the morning, you will see the glory of the Lord because he has heard your grumbling against him. Who are we that, we sh that you should grumble against us? And the Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. And that evening, Quirrell came over and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. And when the dew was gone, Thin flakes like frost on the ground appeared on the desert floor. And when the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is it? For they did not know what it was. But Moses said to them, It is the bread the Lord has given you to eat. This is what the Lord has commanded. Everyone is to gather as much as they need Take an omer for each person you have in your tent. And the Israelites did as they were told. Some gathered much, some gathered little. And when they measured it by the omer, the one who gathered much did not have too much. And the one who gathered little did not have too little. Everyone had gathered just as much as they needed. So the title of my sermon is two titles. Number one, where does your mana come from? Does it come from God? And also, Jesus declared that I am the bread of life. I'd like to start off from a prayer that was offered in Jewish homes at the start of Sabbath. I'm going to excerpt it. Days pass and years vanish and we walk sightless among miracles. It's a royal oak, beloved worshiping community. Do you walk sightless among miracles? Do you see your daily miracle that God is offering you? Do you see your mana every morning? So dear God, please come into my mind and heart this morning so that this, your beloved worshiping community here at Royal Oak, will not walk sightless among your miracles nor will they be deaf to your presence. But let them see your wonders. Let them hear your voice. Let your spirit guide them in everything they do. And let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart bring them closer to you, closer to each other. In Jesus' name, amen. So the Exodus saga reads like an adventure novel. It's got everything. It's got plagues. It's got locusts. It's got rivers of blood. It has the Jews leaving Egypt. It has the Egyptian army chasing them. It has the Red Sea parting, the Jews walking through it, the Egyptian army drowning, and then they are in the desert. At which point, several hundred thousand, maybe as many as a million Jewish people started grumbling. Can you imagine? God takes them out of slavery in Egypt where they were working seven days a week. And they were grumbling to God that why did he do that? They were better off in slavery. And that just wasn't one or two. That was hundreds of thousands or maybe even a million grumbling people in the desert. But you know, this story of Exodus is not about the grumbling. It's not about the adventure. What it's really about is that God is seeing the Jews. And God is hearing the Jews. And God is sustaining the Jews. 
You see, God sees and hears and sustains the Jewish people as he hears and sustains and responds to us today. The miracle of the manna was not just that bread appeared every morning, it's that God gave himself to his people. And God continues to give himself to his people, to us, this day, this time. In Exodus 16, verse 10, it says, while Aaron was speaking to the whole of the Israelite community, they looked towards the desert, and the, there was the glory of God appearing in the cloud. That is an astonishing thing. God gave himself to the Jewish people, cloud by day, fire by night. The Jews could not, if they wanted to, walk sightless among miracles because God was always there. And God also gave the Jews the gift of food, quails in the evening, manna in the morning. It says in Exodus 16, 4, I will rain bread from heaven down on you. So creator God's manna was not only feeding the Jewish bodies, but he was confirming on a theological basis that he was giving himself to them. And so the Jews had manna. And when Jesus came and preached, they got a little confused because Jesus said, I am the bread of life. But they said, well, we want that old stuff, that manna stuff. You see, they didn't know what we know is that the bread of heaven truly is the body and blood of Christ that he gives us in communion because in Holy Communion, Jesus is giving us himself, his love and his grace. But whether we look in the Old Testament or the New Testament, God is present and God is feeding his children. And so in those most trying times when the Jews were wondering, is God with us? Maybe we should have stayed in Egypt. We have found ourselves this week wondering some of those same questions. Is God with us? This week we had many, many text messages back and forth about Robin's health and about Ben's health. And many people stepped up to, to give of themselves to that situation, to help that family. <clears throat> this week, we also had the discouraging news that some places are reinstituting masking indoors. Because surprisingly or not, the COVID variant Delta is more infectious than chickenpox and is exploding in some parts of this country. We also have the start of a new year in school, which for many parents is exciting, but it's also anxiety producing. Are the kids gonna be going to school? Will they have to wear masks? And if you listen to our blessings and concerns this morning, there are three pages of blessings and concerns, many more concerns than blessings. So we are in something of a desert here at Royal Oak. But we know from this scripture, and it was so inspiring that the Holy Spirit put this in our lectionary this week, that as God fed the people of the Old Testament, God is feeding us. And if you look at that scripture, you find out that the young people would walk further to get the manna, and the older infirm people would not have to walk as far. And you also discovered that those who gathered a lot in the end had what they needed. And those who could not gather very much in the end had what they needed. You see, the healthy were helping feed the sick. The young were helping the old. This is a model in the Old Testament, but it's also here in our actions here at Royal Oak. It's a cliche to say we put faith in action. At Royal Oak, we are putting our faith in action. And this work that we do is both work and it is a joy and a blessing that we are able to do it. Reverend Scott Hosey reminds us, I mean, he gets real 
Being a Christian is not like going to Disney World, in case you thought it was. <clears throat> we all have issues in our lives that need God's presence to help us get through. We all have some kind of desert that we are in, whether illness, financial insecurity, loneliness, bad job, family dysfunction. But we know from Scripture that God gave his mana to the Jews and is giving his mana to us. So Royal Oak, beloved worshiping community, do you see God's mana in your lives? Are you feeling God's presence sustaining you each day? Or do you sometimes find yourselves falling into that trap of walking sightless among miracles? So I'd like you to think about this. Maybe the way to see God's mana in our lives is to develop a mana mind. A mind that looks for God's blessings in our lives. Because if you look at this church, and this church has been through opening, closing, opening, closing, all kinds of things in the last year and a half, as all churches have. But we have reopened our Sunday school. Can you hear them? We have started special family-oriented Sundays that have been awesome and wonderful and are continuing into the future, apparently. Yes. Our food pantry is newly blessed with fresh produce. And if you want to see God feeding his people, you know, we think, oh, the food pantry? Yeah, that feeds the community. The food pantry feeds us because it reminds us of God's blessings that we have an abundance that we can give to people in need. We are being fed God's mana every day by having members do opening prayers and scripture readings. And we have new families and old families and singles and couples and people visiting and coming back to church. We have restarted fellowship after church. We have a coffee bar and a welcome center and we are engaged and supporting and praying. Our DS called me up yesterday morning and said, Pastor Tim, I'd like to suggest the following happen about, you know, that family, the Allens. And I said, Reverend Davis, we got that covered. We're already doing this and this and this and this. He said, well, I talked to the bishop. I wanted to get things started. I said, Reverend Davis, we got this. We got this. So I'd like to think about this. I'd like to give you an idea. I found this beautiful quote by an author, Andre Dubu, and he's talking about the Eucharist. Now, we have God's mana in our life each morning, each morning, each morning, as that poem that I read in the beginning said. But really, as New Testament people, we have the Eucharist, where Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood, do this in remembrance of me. But consider this. Andre de Boos said, my belief in the Eucharist is simple. Without touch, God is just an idea. Without touch, God is just an idea. I love the fact that we are meeting in person. I love the fact that we have fellowship. I love the fact that we are gathering for meetings. Because without touch, the touch of fellowship, the touch of connections, the touch of phone calls, that this community is simply an idea. He goes on to say that Jesus is the bread of life because in it, when he receives the Eucharist, he is receiving God's presence. And touching the Eucharist makes Andre mindful of that. Now I know these packets that we have, it's hard to think of anything other than how irritating the packet is. <laughs> I understand that. But maybe that's our challenge, small challenge. As you're looking at that, you are receiving. 
in the line of the manna that God gave the Jews. You are there at the Last Supper with Jesus giving the body and blood of himself to his disciples. So what if we could take this idea about without touch, God is just an idea, and transfer it to the mana mind that I asked you to have about looking at your daily blessings each day, each day getting up and looking around your house, not for dew on the carpet, that would be a problem, but you know, the blessings that you have in your life and seeing how you can receive those and share those and receive those and share those. If we could do this, then we would no longer walk sightless among miracles because we would wake up each morning seeing God's bread raining down from heaven in our lives today. That is an astonishing image. There was so much bad news on the news. There were so many people in need. And yet we, if we can just turn our minds, can see God's bread raining down from heaven on us each day. So, Royal Oak, beloved worshiping community, I'm done. But I'm going to ask you a question. What is your mana? What is your mana? How does God feed you each day? And how do you, as the Jewish people did in the time of Moses, take your overflow of God's blessings and give them to the people around you? We're not in Disney World anymore. So we need to work on this. But we joyfully work on this because we are part of a beloved worshiping and praying community. And so we give thanks for God's presence in our lives. We give thanks for the love of God that transfers from all of us to each other. And we give thanks that we are able to receive this morning the great gift of Jesus' Last Supper, the body and blood. And we do this in remembrance of him. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are always with us, even when we do not notice you. You are always speaking to us even when we are not listening. You always care for us, even when we think the power is in our hands. You never give up on us, even when we have already given up on ourselves. You are always working for our good and seeking our full salvation, no matter how much we struggle against you. And so, all of heaven joins us in an unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The sound in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The sound in the highest. You are always ready to extend healing and care and a heartfelt prayer. You are always ready to serve, showing us by your example. The teacher serving the student. The master changing places with the slave. May we always be ready like you. May we always be ready to serve. And so, on the night before he died, Jesus took the bread that opens the hearts to the need. And with prayers of thanksgiving, Jesus broke it and shared it with all. Please don't consume them yet. But Jesus took the bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. 
And when the supper was over, may we always be ready to be like you, and may we always be ready to serve. And then when the supper was over, Jesus then took the cup that recalls the price paid for our sins. And with prayers of thanksgiving, Jesus shared it with all. Drink with me, for this is the cup filled with my blood, poured out in rejoicing of God's eternal covenant of forgiveness. May we be always ready like you, and may we always be ready to serve. We want to serve like you, sacrifice like you, love like you. This we have found in the holy mystery we now declare. Christ, Christ has died, died. Christ, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Sure salvation, perfect peace. Always allow these gifts of bread and juice to become for us the body and blood of Christ, the hope of abundant life. Sure salvation, perfect peace. Always allow the gift of our whole selves to become for the world your church, the living body of Christ, the hope of abundant life. Ensure salvation, perfect peace. Open our eyes as we see you in the lives of others. Open our ears as we hear your words shared with us by others. And open our hearts as we pray for the healing and comfort of others. We pray these words to Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, held in the loving embrace of the Holy Spirit for the glory and honor of the one true God, living and compassionate, loving and compassionate, now and forever. Amen. So now, consume the elements. And if you were coming up to the altar rail, as we will again someday, I would give you a piece of bread and say, the body of Christ given for you. The bread of heaven given for you. And then you would take that and dip it in the cup. And when you did that, I would say to you, the cup of salvation given for you. And as you consider this, please consume this. sometimes like to look at things about World War II. Don't ask me why. And I was looking at some YouTube videos this morning of chaplains in World War II. And I was looking at YouTube videos of chaplains celebrating communion. And they were celebrating communion in Europe, in war-torn jungles and ruins of buildings. And they were celebrating communion in the Pacific on one of the islands. I saw a Jeep pull up and they would spread the elements out on the hood of the Jeep and celebrate communion. This body and blood that we receive today, this unending love and grace of God, this connects us with so much love and spirit and holiness throughout so many thousands of years. And let us give thanks by praying as Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. If you would like to help with the ministries and work of this church, we are doing so many things. I, I, when I got here, somebody said, uh, we are small but mighty. And I thought, oh, really? Okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> I have learned that we are small but mighty. We are, we are punching so much above our weight, and anything you can contribute to the ministries of the church goes to these very active ministries in this church. I, don't, I haven't talked about this recently, but our um, playthroughs of our Sunday service on Facebook have for the last several months been averaging over 200 playthroughs each Sunday. And our noon devotions for the last several months have been averaging over 100 playthroughs each day for our noon devotions. We are reaching so many people beyond this church. So anything you can contribute, whether prayers or funding, is most gratefully appreciated. Well, let us have our uh, prayer of thanksgiving. Holy Trinity, your love created us. Your passion saved us from sin, and your power transfigures us in glory to you. So thank you for giving us this bread of heaven and this cup of salvation. And we generously offer back to you our gifts, our treasures, our prayers. In Jesus' name, amen. So Royal Oak, beloved worshiping community, I love you with the love of Jesus. And that is the greatest love there is. So may God's love surround you. May Christ forgive your sin. And may the Holy Spirit fill you with eternal life as you take God's mana each morning and share it with everyone you meet. In Jesus' name, amen.